stage. I don't want to hear you say that. Put that umbrella around the one take it off you. Warum? How could peer observation be used as a tool to help recently qualified teachers improve their practice? John Bailey has come to work with a pair of Year 3 teachers at Hamilton Primary School in Colchester. Experienced teacher Sarah Wright is going to offer advice to recent NQT Sophia Morley on how to develop her handling of literacy lessons. They're going to watch each other teach. Really important types of words we need to think of when we're first, describing. First, Sophia. What we're going to do first is look at some descriptions of characters that I've found for you from some Roald Dahl books. And what I want you to do is, on your tables, look at these descriptions and see if you can find some really good words. I want you to think about these words and how they've been used because I want you to do the same sort of thing later. So. You probably need to choose one person to read out to the group. He was so skinny, he, t he seemed to be made out of fairy bits of wire, but he danced wonderfully well. Instead of just putting so, what if they put he was skinny, but he could, like, dance really, really well? No, but then it would fall over. How are they describing the mouth other than like a dog's bottom? You're off to a good start with it. They obviously trust and love you. The relationship there is great. And I hope you feel good about it because um, that's, a, that's a teacher at work with an engaged class. I think it's a really nice start to the lesson. Um, I think the kids are extremely switched on and engaged in what they're doing and they're quite clear on the different words that they're using as well. So let's go round and see if you've guessed who your characters are and what sort of words you found that are particularly descriptive. Hannah. What were your really good describing words uh, in that? Well, we, he was amazingly yes. skinny. Yeah, instead of, like, so skinny. Yeah. Like, Because we don't think it's very, that like, size, wow. Because mm -hmm. it says, like, he was furry. so skinny, I think he seems like made out of furry, furry bits, bits of wire. wire. Okay. I think perhaps so when some of the children are discussing some of the things that they're doing, they were quite keen to speak to each other and quite happy speaking in their little groups. But when it came to actually giving the feedback, I think that perhaps some of the children weren't listening to what some of the other children were saying or that when they were giving the feedback, um, they were both speaking at the same time. So, so some of the other children, it was more difficult for them to listen. A number of the children were asked to, to what they said as well, so some of them became a little bit bored during that time. Alistair? Gigantic. Gigantic. What was that describing? Uh, the bird. The gigantic bird. Good. Anything else? Um, Just gigantic? No, there's um, more. The amazing beak. Uh huh. Isabel, was there something else? I had an, an amazing orange coloured beak. Right, and was it like something? Sarah's class is tackling the same topic, but she uses a very different technique. Now, adjectives, big word there. Just in your talk part, now, very, very quickly, I'd like you to think of an adjective. So, just between you, try and think of an interesting adjective. Off you go. It's a thing. It's marvellous. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Big. Uh, Harry. Yeah, right, who'd like to share one of their adjectives with us? Amy. Delicious. Delicious, okay. Oliver. Bouncy. Bouncy, lovely. One more, Harry. Fantastic. Fantastic. What kind of words are they then? What is an adjective? Emily. Uh, describing word. Well done, it's a describing word, isn't it? Okay. We're going to be thinking about Roald Dahl's baddies. So, what I want you to do again with your talk partners is I want you to think of as many Roald Dahl's baddies as you can. Bunny Catcher Man Hugger, Meat Reaper, Sponge Dog Spiker, and all the little kids. I think that uh, talk partners would really benefit my children rather than working in a whole group where they have to listen to. Like four people or five people talk each time. If they if they've got just a partner, then it's going to be quicker, isn't it? They're going to spend less time on it. So, 
and um, also I suppose when children are feeding mm -hmm. back as well in the class as a whole class if you're only taking it from a couple of people because they feel like they've already shared an idea you don't have can. to get so many children in the classroom to share their idea because they feel like they've all had a say of something yeah. already and so, also yeah. it would encourage more children to speak up I think a lot of children will sit back in a group won't they and let the more dominant children um, get on with it and they'll let the more dominant people speak to me, feed it back to me, whereas if they're in a talk partner they might be more encouraged to speak. OK, I noticed in Sarah's lesson she was on at them um, about every four minutes, but I also noticed that teacher in intervention is very focused. Mm. In the next three minutes I want you to talk with your partners about such and such mm. and then we get three or four exemplars back from the room. Mm. And so when they're talking, they're yeah, going at it with a target. Yeah, they're yeah, they're really engaged. Yeah. Um, and paradoxically, that seems, it feels less teacher-led than when you say you've got ten minutes to think of some adjectives. Mm -hmm. But if they don't have a plan for how to work at the table, all sorts of things might be happening at the mm -hmm. tables, mightn't they? Yeah. Is that right? Have I got that right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. There's certain rules that we follow which we've established with the class and that they've, they've made up themselves. So it's like, look at your talk partner, talk on task, um, take to turns to listen to one another and to listen carefully to your talk partner. And with the talk partners, they change every two weeks as well. It's um, randomly picked out, so children just names in a hat and they're picked out, and that's quite an important part of it as well, that it's random, because the children feel that there's a fairness about that as well. With your talk partner, what extra Roldar characters could you make? Off you go. Mrs... Um, Mrs... Mr Pterodactyl. Spotty. Okay. Oh, every time she gets angry, she can tell us... They can, they can tell... I must say, I like the idea of ringing the changes with talking partners, because there's all sorts of social business going on there as well, isn't there? This is gonna... No. <laughs> Presumably it means at the end of a term, I've talked in a pretty focused way with at least half the class. Yeah, thanks. Does that make them more confident talkers? I think so, yeah. And, and also those children that aren't very confident or, or sometimes um, have difficulty thinking of ideas, if the other person can give them some ideas as well, then it's nice for them mm. to be able to put their hands up and say something and that makes them more confident. So, we've met the characters, we've talked a little bit about... Back in Sophia's class, it's time to turn the preparation into practice. But we need to now think about exactly what it is that we want to write when we're doing our character descriptions. First of all, I want you to describe the appearance of your character. That's a bit like what we did the other day, isn't it, when we were describing each other. We described their long, luscious blonde hair or something like that. And then you're going to move on and describe them, describe what they're like. Are they a good character, a goody, or are they a bad character, a baddie? I want you to think about how they're bad and how they're good. Obviously, we need to keep going with those adjectives and adverbs and similes in there as well, if we can. Sophia's guidelines produce results, but John thinks she could learn more from Sarah, who sets out the success criteria before starting. She was like a great white, soggy, overboiled cabbage. Now, why is this an effective character description? What do I mean by effective? Alice? You can really get a good picture of what it's like. Right. I want you to think about why this particular one is an effective character description. What does Roll Dar do to make it so good? Discuss that for a couple of minutes. You use good adjectives. Yeah. Excellent adjectives. It's overboiled cabbage. Right, so she said she was like a great wild soggy overboiled cabbage. So what's what's the word for that when you're describing what something's it's like? Sticky. Okay, it's horrible, but what's the what's the actual technical word? What did you notice about the way Sarah established success criteria with the class. It was really clear and you took out what the children noticed was good about um, a piece of writing and then wrote it up and used those as the success criteria for their work. Sam? Roldar does really good combinations like fat and short. Great. Opposites. 
we say he contrasts characters. So he's got good characters and he's got bad characters. Good. And we were talking about down here, he doesn't just do a bad character. What does he do? Um, he makes them... Really, really horrible. Really, really bad, doesn't he? Anything else of why it was a good... Good description, Jacob. Excellent adjectives. Right, OK, good. Like he uses... body. By picking out why this is a good description, you've made the success criteria for writing your own descriptions. I think that one of the central ideas is that we share success criteria with children. Children embark on tasks knowing what it takes to be successful. And if we've done a really good job, they've helped to tell us what it means to be successful. There's one, just one other thing I want, I want, I want to cover. Um, High-level questioning. Is there any difference between the success criteria for writing a goodie and writing a baddie? That's a hell of an adult question, isn't it? That's a very high-level uh, question. Mm -hmm. Would we still use similes? Would we still use interesting adjectives? I came away thinking, damn it, I learned something big there, and, <laughs> and so did they. In the training that you've had so far, where does questioning sit? And that idea of, uh, of, of thinking of uh, mind-expanding questions for children? Getting children to ask questions themselves is, I think, is really important. Mm -hmm. And I try to include that where I can as well. I think, I, I have to say, I'm not sure whether I really include a lot of higher order questions. I can't, I can't really think about it that easily. But I, I ask quite a lot of open questions and I try to encourage them to ask questions as well. I think as well as having high level questions, it's having a range of questions is really important and that's that's something that we've also been sort of trialling as well. So changing a question into a statement and then asking the children if they agree or disagree or just giving the children the answer and saying, right, what what's the question? So so rather than saying mm. what's an adjective, say bright. Okay, what what's the question? That's the answer. So it's really getting them thinking. If you wanted to achieve some of those effects that you saw um, in Sarah's lesson, where would you start? What would you do? What would you do tomorrow morning? Um, a lot of the stuff that I've seen in Sarah's lesson, I'm really eager to take take on and use in my class. I'm starting something just simple, some really simple success criteria with how to read or something like that. That sounds really silly, but, you know, checking your words and rereading or something or splitting the words up if they're not sure what the word is. Mm -hmm. Or success criteria for handwriting, yeah. even in just a simple Yeah, rather than then. straight away in a lesson. I think that the talk partners would be something that... Oh, yeah, I can start you... using straight away, really, the That's talk it. partners. That's it, absolutely. You could start on Monday morning yeah. with that. If I was Sophia, uh, how am I going to get help from you? How's this relationship going to work? I've never seen Sarah teach, so no, it's really good. Um, I think I'd like to do it more often, actually. Definitely, we can support each other more, so Sophia can watch me teach more, but particularly with our planning as well, obviously, that we can plan in those things and asking questions and, and thinking about the success criteria beforehand to aid the children. For my money, a bit of joint planning is brilliant, mm -hmm. even if it's only 10 minutes. Yeah, here's my lesson plan, or here are my overheads. How can I improve it? Mm -hmm. um, and that's a great way to work. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because then you very quickly know everything that the other person knows. Mm. Yeah.